Julie and I were talking about how there's actually three different Republican parties here. You've got nationalist populist wing that was embodied by Steve Bannon. You've got a McConnell, Paul Ryan establishment wing that's aligned with Wall Street and corporate CEOs. Then you've got a conservative GOP like Mike Pence and Ted Cruz. Yeah. Is this a GOP that's in open civil war? Well, let's hope not. Uh, this current rift between Bannon and Trump is really unfortunate. Uh, there's never a good time, but right now, it, you know, with all the other distractions that are going on, you don't need that for the administration. Uh, you don't need it for our country. Uh, we've got so many positive things going. You know, if you look at the Dow today, I mean, you look at the board, it's all green. Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, you know, a lot of rollback in regulation. We got this new tax bill, and, you know, there's something in that for everyone right now to see some positive. You just hate to see this other level of distraction. Well, the three different wings of this party put aside their differences for the tax cut, but now that they've got that behind them, what can they do to continue that? What can they, where else do they have common ground? Well, they've got, you know, they've got to look at infrastructure, right? I mean, there's got to be common ground there. Uh, just driving around the streets here in New York, for example, in the airports, we just heard today 3,000 flights closed, uh, mm. canceled. But I, I think there are areas of, of uh, where they can come together, not only you know, the Republican Party, but certainly the Democrats could join in on some of this. You were talking earlier in your segment about, uh, you know, DACA and, and what has to happen with immigration. Yes. I think there's got to be some coalescing and coming together there for commonality for the good of our country. I think we got to set aside this partisanship. You know, it's kind of like sports and football. When, when a team takes the field, they should all be playing for the brand on the front of the jersey, mm. not the name on the back of the jersey, right? And so I think there are areas. I'm encouraged that, you know, President Trump is getting Mitch and, 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 and Speaker Ryan together. You know, when you think about this administration, there's a lot of cultural differences. And when you run a business, it's very important to get harmony among various cultures. You've got businessmen and women, you've got government officials, you've got military officials, you've got private sector. So we have to keep bringing together. It's like when you do a merger and acquisition. Acquisition integration has to be a core competency. And if it is, then it's a huge competitive advantage. And I think that's true for the administration also. You, you said earlier that the Steve Bannon scenario incident here was unfortunate but can it also be fortunate in some way that if you you take out what's perceived as a, a pretty antagonistic influence on on the president he can take more of a traditional role now perhaps and and help republican lawmakers project protect their majorities because surely this is critical as well as we head towards the midterms no i, I think you're exactly right if the rift can settle itself down and apologies could be expressed to each other and you could bring that faction you know Scar, that you were mentioning about that that Bannon kind of led mm -hmm. and and it does coalesce and come together then then you have more unification than separation